What is going on, guys? Welcome to episode number nine of our Minnesota Vikings franchise. Thank you to those of you who are going to be hanging in here with me through this commentary. I might need some help from Brandon Godman and Charles Davis because I am sick currently. If you can't tell, I'm a little stuffed up. So for those of you guys who are going to be hanging on to this video and just sticking with me through this painful, grueling process of giving as best commentary as I possibly can, Thank you. I could have delayed this, but you know how YouTube algorithm works. If you don't upload, you pay for it, right? So I have to get this video out to you guys, and I know it's important to you guys that want to watch some Vikings franchise videos. Plus, I love this franchise series so far. It's going to get even better once we get that scouting report and once we start getting some players uh, scouted up here, and especially with the offseason. What are we going to do in the offseason? But that's a long ways away. We've got a playoff contending team here trying to beat up on the Denver Broncos here at home. You saw the first possession for the Broncos. is not going to go their way. They go three and out. Minnesota's football here on the 21-yard line. And Alexander Madison from Boise State has taken over the starting job, mostly because of injury. Dalvin Cook, when he comes back, no worries. He's going to be the starting running back. But he is hurt with injury an injury and he has been out for the entirety of the season we're already nine and two right now we get a bye week next week so we're already into week number 12 and it has not been easy the offense has been stalling a little bit since dalvin cook has been out so madison and abdullah the one-two punch here they're trying to do their best to replace that type of production that's not easy as we can see a third and seven pass completion here to kyle rudolph and did we get the first down we did not. So he's only going to get six yards on that play, on that reception. And we do not kick the field goal. So we end up punting the football away. It's just a little bit out of Dan Bailey's range. We've seen him miss some field goals in the last couple weeks. Some pretty long-ish field goals, especially from 50. And, uh, you know, he's just he's getting a little up. He's getting a little older. He's getting a little up there. So he hasn't been able to come through with those kicks. So we punt the football away. They pick up a first down here after a nice catch to Emmanuel Sanders. And then this pass complete to Royce Freeman. But Anthony Harris lays the big boom stick on Freeman, who is another big-bodied guy. And they only get five on that first down play. Second and five here, Philip Lindsay checks and gets three. Third and two. And Flacco going to go down. That is Armin Watts with the sacks. We haven't seen his name pop up at all in this franchise series. So it's good to see that he got in and got some action and produced but you know what's not producing this minnesota vikings offense one of two for six yards in the second quarter for Kirk cousins we have not thrown the football with him and the defense comes up with another huge play helping this offense yet again holton hill with the fumble recovery and you know who with the big hit that led to the fumble harrison smith and alexander madison just powering through that's a huge run. We needed something like that to get this offense rolling here. And somehow Josh Doxson caught that pass. I have no idea how he caught that pass. But you know what? We're going to take it. And then, of course, Melifanu comes in from the left side. From that left tackle spot, Riley Reef. That's your man. Riley Reef again. Giving up pressure. Abdullah getting a big time game there it's gonna be third and six and pass complete to Rudolph did he roll in he got it touchdown Vikings blow that horn first touchdown of the game for Minnesota it's gonna be seven to three and that is a huge response drive especially after not coming through in the clutch when we needed the offense to come through for us guys now the defense again Eric Kendricks who's having a great season at that outside linebacker spot, comes up with an interception on Joe Flacco. Threw it right to him. Threw it right to him. Like He didn't even give his receiver a shot here. Cousins firing out to the middle. He's got Josh Doxson, the former connection there with the Redskins, and he's going to come out with an injury, unfortunately. We'll have to check in and see if he does come back in the game. I believe he does. I don't think it's a very serious injury here, but 7-3 to three game. Second quarter, a minute 14, and almost picked off. Almost picked off. It was a good read, but it was an even better play by the defender there. And Jordan Taylor, actually, Kyle Rudolph, excuse me, doesn't turn his head 
I think that that would have been a completion in the end zone. Again, another touchdown. And then we get that happening. Chris Harris comes through. He had almost picked off Cousins in the end zone on the first down throw. And now on the third down throw, he gets his. And he gets that interception. That wasn't a good throw by Kirk. Not a good one whatsoever. When I say Kirk, I mean me. Flacco can't find anything open. And this defense again comes up huge. Everson Griffin with his fifth sack on the season second of this game. Royce Freeman bouncing off the would-be tackler. And then we got Harrison Smith out here. And Anthony Barr teaming up to push Freeman out out of bounds third and 15 and then another sack that's Stefan Weatherly with the sack and guys I'm telling you what we talked about it in the preseason we talked about it in the very first episode of this franchise that this defense is going to be the calling card of this Vikings football team in 2019 maybe 2020 going forward got young players all over the field with it it's got a good core group of players and plus Mike Zimmer being that defensive minded guy it's really going to be the reason why this Vikings team is winning football games. This offense with Cousins, you know, you got to ask for him to come up clutch and and be the captain, be the captain of the team, steer the ship, right? And sometimes he doesn't come through in the clutch, but he has in this series since we're 9-2. and two. He's been doing well here. Adam Thielen, after a good throw by Cousins, Thielen's dropping the pass there, so it's not going to go complete. And we have to settle for another field goal here. And Dan Bailey kicks it up and good. So 10 to 6 game. Very low scoring defensive struggle in today's action with 521 in the third quarter. Emmanuel Sanders catches this for a two yard loss, and then it doesn't get any easier for Denver trying to move the ball on this Vikings D as they jump off sides. Second and 17. Phillip Lindsay can't go anywhere. Only gets two. Third and 15. And then Flacco with a Oh no, the in route, the dig route, and Emmanuel Sanders is going to bust it for a big time touchdown. That's really what you're asking for from Joe Flacco, right? You're just getting your athletes in space, having them make the plays, because there's no way Joe Flacco's got the arm strength to throw that deep ball like he used to with the Ravens. So we got to shut this down. We got to get it under control here. We're losing the game now. 13 to 10 after that big play. Josh Doxson, you saw him catching nice pass, getting out of bounds. Mir Abdullah making this run up the middle. And then Josh Doxson, who checks back in again after getting hurt, drops this pass. And Kirk Cousins is like, he's going to get this guy killed. We got to make some better throws here up the middle uh, if you're Kirk Cousins. So first and 10 and almost picked off again. This time by the linebacker. Kirk Cousins. Up the middle. And Kyle Rudolph has had trouble with that so far in this game. He hasn't been turning his head around to make these pass completions. He hasn't been there for Kirk. The safety valve has not been there for Kirk. But you know who has? Josh Doxson. Four catches for 63. He's got. He's already got like two first down catches so far in the game. Like He's been absolutely clutch on third down. And then this big throw off the play action. By Stefan Diggs, he's going to find that soft spot. He's going to get the first down at the nine. First and goal here, pass complete to Ola B.C. Johnson. You guys wanted to see him a little bit. He checked into the game, and he got in for a reception that advanced the football. And then Amir Abdullah has been running hard, running well. Today gets a touchdown, 17-13. Nine minutes left to go in the fourth quarter because we're starting the fourth quarter. Uh -huh. See what I did there. Uh, got it. Second and 15 after a false start penalty. Flacco pump faking. Weatherly's getting pressure. Joseph bringing him down. His first sack of the game. Flacco pushing the offense backward. It's going to be third and 24. Can we not give up a big play right here? Can we just sack him again or something? Let's do, let, let's do that. Flacco going backwards. He's going to go down. And Weatherly gets his second sack of the game. He's starting to come on a little bit and I'm really liking what Weatherly is bringing here in these last couple weeks. And then we're going to go out to the right and it's going to be picked off by Obi Melifanu and we were looking for Irv Smith Jr. If Kirk, I feel like if Kirk threw that more out of bounds 
he would have given his receiver a shot because the feet can stay in bounds, the hands can basically be out of bounds and still be registered for a catch. But instead, he threw it more towards the left, right at Olafanu, Melifanu, and it was picked off. So third and 18, Daniil Hunter with that sack. That's going to be number seven on the game. It's going to be number seven for the Vikings so far. They go short to Royce Freeman, just trying to pick up some, some punt yardage there. And I think... I think Cousins took what I said a little too literally. That was terrible. Completely missed a wide open Kyle Rudolph would have moved the chains here. Sack number eight comes from Anthony Barr. This Vikings defensive pressure on this guy has been relentless all game long. 17-13 still here. Completion to Adam Thielen down the sideline. Here's a bomb to Thielen again. But Callahan's going to pick it off, and at the point of contact, once everybody was down, he actually got registered down at the one. So Callahan, hey, maybe it's going to be like that uh, that Oakland Raiders game. We get an interception, trying to throw it deep. We get a safety, maybe. Maybe it helps us out. But Phillip Lindsay almost, almost busts us for a 99-yard touchdown because nobody was in that second level as we are bringing the heat, we're bringing the pressure. But they do get a first down, so they work themselves from that one yard line going to Craycraft. And then this huge hit, huge hit. That was a first down waiting to happen. And that huge hit jarred the ball loose. This is a big drive for both teams right here. Pass going out to the left. And Anthony Harris on the coverage for Emmanuel Sanders breaks it up. So a minute 57, first and 10 for Minnesota. If we get some first downs here, maybe just a couple, we're going to seal the deal with this game. So Denver already is starting to feel that pressure. They're starting to call their timeouts right here. We got five on that play, and they just brought the house here, and we get a loss of three. So it's going to be third and eight. We're going to run up the middle with Abdullah. He's going to roll his way past the first down marker. Denver uses their last timeout. And with a minute 43, we are still going to run the football here because I didn't do the math correctly in my head at the time I'm playing the game. And I, I feel like we could have just burned the clock off having just kneeled the ball uh, from that point. So we still elect to run the ball there, get some positive yardage. We tack on more rushing yardage. That's going to help the end of season stats, I would assume. Probably get some of that sack yardage back <laughs> for total offense. But there you go. You see your stats there, 179 passing yards. It was basically non-existent. Kirk Cousins was not good. Um, I wouldn't even say it was decent. Just a lot of inaccurate throws. 51 QBR, three picks, one touchdown, 18 of 30. It's not acceptable. But usually when he does less, the team wins. 14 attempts for Madison, 10 attempts for Abdullah. Both those running backs were very solid today. Adam Thielen with five catches for 55. We had Doxon was huge on third down attempts, third down conversions. Uh, Kyle Rudolph with that touchdown grab that he had in today's game. And you know what? We saw the blocking there just real quick. The Vikings didn't give up a single sack on Cousins. So for going 18 of 30 with no sacks, like no pressure on him, he's got to be better. But... Props to the defense, right? Props to the defense. Three tackles for losses, eight sacks, two for Griffin, two for Weatherly, one for Watts, one for Barr, one for Hunter, and Linval Joseph. It was just insane. Absolutely insane. We had an interception by Eric Kendricks, a forced fumble by yours truly, Harrison Smith. I mean, you can't really ask for more from your defense, especially when your offense has not played that well. I do think that when Dalvin Cook comes back, we're sitting here at 9-2 and two right now. We're the third best team record-wise in the NFL. That's saying something. And our defense has played really, really well to keep us in all of these games. And the offense has got to take that next step. Just has to. All these defenses that when once we get into the playoffs, I mean, we're, we're a lock. We're basically a lock. Unless we lose five games in a row and somehow the Packers or the Lions start to sneak up on us, I'm telling you guys, the defenses in the playoffs are going to be so much better than what we're doing, what we're playing against in regular season. 
this offense has got to take that next step. But we see just the overall statistics here so far because now we're already into week 12, into the bye week. Kirk Cousins, you know, he's kind of right on par with where he's been at. 67% completion percentage, 17 touchdowns, 9 picks. You know, he's, he's playing decently. He's playing right where he's at. He's not overachieving. He's not underachieving, if that makes sense. Receiving wise, six touchdowns for Thielen, four for Diggs, four for Rudolph, five from Josh Doxson because most of those touchdowns were when he was with the Redskins. So I actually had to take control of the Redskins, drop him, and then sign him as the Vikings. So that's where all of his statistics and those touchdowns are coming from. From him, we saw the rushing totals for Cook and Madison, Madison obviously leading the team in rushing yards only strictly because of the injury to Cook, just not a lot of playing time. Offensive line has been playing okay. It could be a little bit better as far as the sacks go, but they've been playing okay. They've been playing fine. Daniil Hunter with nine sacks so far. Five and a half for Anthony Barr. The next highest is Everson Griffin and Linval Joseph with five a pair. But Daniil Hunter's been a boss. He's been a boss this season, and Harrison Smith even chipping in on the pass rush with four sacks himself. Interceptions, Harris with three, Barr with four. He's the do-it-all defensive player on this team. Eric Kendricks with the one that he had in the last game you guys just saw. In the pass deflections, Eric Kendricks, Rhodes, Smith, Harris. You just keep listing off these guys, man. I'm, I'm really happy with how our, our secondary has played. Our defensive line has played. It's just, it's crazy right now. Harrison Smith with 10, 10, 10 forced fumbles. That's actually a tie for the season record of forced fumbles held by O.C. Unamanyora in 2010 and Charles Tillman in 2012, a defensive back. Charles Tillman, 10 forced fumbles. Don't know, man. Don't know. I... I talked to you guys in the comment section. I think what I'm going to do, because I haven't played week 13 yet. We're in week 12 right now, just looking at the season stats. But uh, I have not played week 13 against the Seahawks. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to at least, if you see me, if you see the record having played twice or three times, I'm playing with the slider sets. I want to know how I can get forced fumbles to get lower. Most people in the comment section are saying to lower the slider because that would make the most sense. It seems like common sense. Some people are saying even if you move it all the way up, that means fumbles are not going to happen. That's what the slider actually is saying to us is that you move it all the way up, it means fumbles are less likely to happen. I don't know. I don't know. I got to do some testing on it or at least look it up. I got to figure it out. But um, I think that's a last resort. I don't want to remove the superstar X factor and unless it's the very last resort type of thing here as we just are looking at some 2019 annual award leaders right now I'm just kind of talking to you guys very informally um but yeah we, we definitely need to do something about the fumbles I get I get that it can happen I get that it can happen 10 forced fumbles in a season it has happened before in a span of two seasons 2010 to 2012 but um yeah, we, we got to do a little bit better with that because uh, we're only in week 13 at this point. So, guys, I will see you in the next episode. And here's just a little snapshot of JT Peppers, quarterback for Minnesota, the Golden Gophers. And we're going to be taking a look at some of the top-tier talent in this year's draft. Guys, leave a like if you like this thing. I'll see you in the next episode where we will do some scouting and against the Seahawks gameplay. See you guys then. As always, peace.